Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'm going to be painting a cup of green tea or matcha using similar techniques as how I painted the cup of coffee I posted a while back. You can draw this to fit the paper, but since the width of the sketchbook is quite narrow, I decided to go over the side a bit and I'll just paint a very light background. So before we start, I am starting by masking the sides before drawing the outline so I have a better visualization of the frame. While I mask the sides, I do have an announcement to make. I have a new Skillshare class out. This time, it's a step-by-step -step class on how I painted a stack of these oozy chocolate donuts. Despite the details, these were actually quite easy to paint. And if you're interested in food illustration, Skillshare is where I mostly post my detailed classes on that subject matter. If you're not a member yet and you'd like to take the classes, you can go to the link in my description box to get a free 14-day trial membership. But anyway, let's get back to the matcha drink. Once I've masked the area, I'm going to sketch out the cup as well as the wooden saucer. There are going to be a lot of circles to draw for this one and I know that they're not the easiest thing to draw but these simple shapes are always a good practice for basic hand and arm movement for drawing. As a tip, it's better to always draw the large circle all at once rather than drawing small tiny lines or scratches because you can get a better visualization of the overall shape. To do this, it's very important to lift your arm off the table and move using your forearm instead of your wrist. Even if the circles are a bit wonky, you can just fix the edges after you have a better imagery of the size and the overall shape. So I'm just going to draw a few of these and also add on the details for the handle and also the tiny spoon. To draw the handle, I drew out a line to make sure that the handle is adjacent to the cup. And as I start to get the overall shape, I always go back and forth with my eraser and try to fix lines to make them as clean as possible because I want the cup to be very light in color. So I try to make sure that the lines are not too dark and there are no extra scratches that would show through as I paint. If you would like to just trace and paint along to this, I'll also have the downloadable outline in my coffee shop and I'll just leave the link in the description box for you if you're interested. Getting back to the drawing, I use a different method when it comes to drawing out rims because I'm trying to keep a certain distance between the previous circle. So for this, I actually prefer to do more sketchy lines, but I still avoid using too much of my wrist so I don't limit the tightness of the curve. And here you can see me erasing certain areas to get rid of the sketchy lines and try to make the lines as clean and as light as possible. I'm just going to finish off the side of the saucer here and then we'll move on to painting. Let's start to paint. I'm going to start by using graphite gray and gray of gray, but first I want to make sure that the white space is wet so I can distribute the paint evenly. I just use a large flat brush and wet the surface of the paper with clean water but around the edges of the cup and spoon or wherever the subject matter is, I switch to a smaller brush to make it easier for me to get to the tiny edges. I'm going to start with a mixture of those two colors first and I'm going to spread it around the page while avoiding the subject matter. And even if I accidentally make strokes that may look a bit darker or out of place, I don't mind it a bit too much because the wet surface will just help the paint to soften with the rest of the surface up to a certain point. I want most of the light source to come from the top left hand side, so near the bottom right hand side of the saucer that's where I want to add more shadows and also softening it across the sides. So I'm going to use more graphite grey in the mixture or even by itself in a thicker consistency to paint those edges. Here is where I added a slight indication of the cast shadow on the right hand side, but because I still want the color to blend with the background, I'm just softening the darker colors using a clean damp brush. And I'm just going to keep adding on the darker color until it becomes a bit more visible, but I don't want to lose the softness of the background so I'm going to keep softening it using the same method. Thank you. 
I'm going to start with the same colors to paint the cup. So I'm just going to first map out the rough values of the dark and light spots using the gray of gray and the graphite gray. For the lighter areas, I just use the gray of gray and if I want to increase the value, I'm just going to slowly add more graphite gray in the mix. I'm giving a slightly darker value for the inside of the cup because if the light is coming from the left hand side, that part would be slightly hidden from the light, which would make it a bit darker. And as for the rim, I'm just going to first color it in with a very thin consistency of the gray of gray, just to indicate the placement of the rim. Then I'm going to go in with a darker gray from the right hand side using a bit more of the graphite gray mixture and I just tried to soften it and blend it together with the rest of the surface. For the handle, I'm going to paint the inside with a light consistency gray of gray just to separate it from the top section and I'm also going to darken the side of the handle to give it more of a thicker form and because this is facing the opposite side from the light source. I'm also going to create a slight separation where the handle is attached to the cup to add more space so it doesn't look like the handle is placed right at the height of the rim. For the sides of the cup, I want this to look like those handmade ceramics with a bit of texture. So just like my other pots that I painted in my older videos, I want to add very subtle ridges along the body of the cup. So I just add curved lines with a light consistency following the curvature of the cup. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is to just roughly estimate the light source to come from the top left hand side of the page. So I'm going to add shadows on the opposite end of the cup and I'm slowly building up the color layer by layer so I don't accidentally make the color too dark since I still want this cup to be fairly white in color. Moving on to the saucer, I want this to be wooden and as for the color, I'm going to start with a mix of these two colors which are cadmium orange and burnt sienna to lighten and brighten the brown. I'm going to use this color to paint the whole area including the sides and the rim and I'm just doing a rough wash using a medium consistency until I get a fairly good distribution and I'm not even too worried about the evenness of the paint because we're going to layer on the shadows as well as the wooden texture on top anyway. So if the base color is a bit messy when it dries, it's totally fine. You just have to make sure at this point that you paint within the lines. Once I've covered the whole area, I want to start painting the shadows to define and map out the form. For this, I'm adding sepia into my palette and I'm just going to mix this with the previous brown mixture. You want the base color to be dry for this and because I paint the top section first, that area is the driest out of the whole saucer so I'm just starting out with that area. Here I'm just trying to separate the inside portion of the saucer first, so I'm going to paint within the line of the rim while concentrating the paint along the sides and then softening it with more watered down paint towards the inside of the wooden saucer. I'm still using a light consistency because I'm going to build on the colors as I go. So at this point I just basically want the inside to be much lighter than the edge. I'm also going to paint the sides while avoiding the rim and just from these two base colors we can now start to see the form of the object. So after painting these two layers the paper should be a bit damp so before adding on more details I'm going to jump to the base color of the matcha. 
This part is so simple and the most fun to paint in my opinion. I'm just going to start with one color which is sap green. I'm starting with a thin consistency and I'm just going to spread it on the circle in the cup. And after I've gotten a good distribution while the surface is still wet, I'm just going to go back in with a slightly thicker consistency and build on the color. I want the matcha to look like it's recently stirred, so I want to give a very subtle spiral and I'm using a thicker consistency to add that motion and feel free to move the paint around using your brush while it's still wet. So some parts may be a bit more foamy and lighter while others may be a bit darker. And here I'm just going to add a light glaze of sap green on the shadow inside the cup because I want a bit of that color to reflect on the surface of the white cup. I'm sorry for the slow shift and bad lighting here. It's still rainy season and it started to rain heavily while I painted this, so I lost a lot of light. But anyway, moving on to the spoon, I'm just going to add yellow ochre in my palette to paint the base of the spoon. I ended up mixing the yellow ochre with the cadmium orange, but I think I would actually prefer it to be the pure color of yellow ochre because I found that the cadmium orange made the base color of the spoon look a bit too similar to the color of the wood. So if you're doing this, just stick with the yellow ochre. Then after the base color of the spoon is fairly dry, it won't take too long because it's only a small section, I just took some of the brown mixture on my palette with some of the yellow ochre in a medium consistency to start adding a bit of reflection and shadow on the spoon. And I also lined the long handle to make the lines a bit neater. This is just to define the form a little bit so it doesn't look completely flat. Now that I have the basic form of all of the objects, I'm going to move around and add additional shadows to define certain shapes. I'm going to move back to the saucer first and this time I'm going to start adding soft cast shadows. I'm going to indicate some under the spoon as well as under the cup using a mix of sepia and cadmium orange. Once I place the shadows, then I'm just going to go back in with a clean damp brush to soften the edges and work around the edges of the saucer to add a bit more shadow and do the same thing by softening those edges as well. I'm going to go back to the cup now and I'm just going to enhance the shadow that I've already mapped out in the beginning. Watercolors will fade as they dry, so it's normal to keep building on the colors. But this time, instead of using gray of gray with graphite gray, I'm going to use a mixture of graphite gray with sepia to add a slight warmer tone to the shadow this time. I'm also going to add a bit of graphite gray for the shadow on the saucer to add a bit of cooler tone from the cup. So at this point, I'm just going back and forth to the cup and saucer and trying to redefine the shapes further by enhancing the shadows to make the objects pop out a little bit more. At the moment, the saucer looks like it's curved inside because there are no shadows around the edges compared to the outer portion which you can see a definite line for the outside wall. So I'm going to add more shadows around the sides as well to indicate the wall surrounding it. Here I took some of the brown mixtures that I have on my palette and I add random dots and marks on the cup to give it more of a natural clay texture and then after that I'm just going to use a clean damp brush to soften it. This is optional but I think this is just a bit of fun additional texture to add. Thank you. 
I'm also going to work a bit more on the base of the green tea. I'm just adding an additional glaze with the sap green to separate the darker and the lighter portion of the foam. I'm going to add an additional color to the palette now. This time I'm adding hooker's green into the bunch and I'm going to use this mixed with sap green as well as sepia to create a deep and dark green. I'm going to use this to paint dots using the tip of my brush in different sizes to represent larger air bubbles but I try to limit the amount that I paint so it doesn't overpower the composition. Instead, I feel like it gives a nice additional texture. I think from what I've read, a good ceremonial grade matcha is supposed to have very fine foam after you whisk it, so technically it's better to not have these dots, but for this painting, I feel like this additional texture adds a bit more interest and life to the painting. And since I want the tea to look like it's slightly stirred, I'm going to follow the placement of the bubbles accordingly, following a rough spiral movement. Now I'm just going to wait for those bubbles to dry off and meanwhile I'm going to add a wooden texture by using the first brown mixture from Cadmium Orange with Burnt Sienna. I'm going to use a light to medium consistency to paint randomized lines following one direction and I just basically tried to vary the space as well as the thickness of the lines to represent a natural wood grain. Here I decided to use what was left on my brush to just add a slightly warmer shadow along the side. I just felt like the background looks a bit too cold in comparison to the subject matter itself, so I just wanted to add a bit more warmth by using a very light glaze of the brown. So like usual, after painting a new element, which are the bubbles, I'm going to go back and balance out the colors again because they should be fully dry by now. And here comes the fun part, which is the white gouache. You can use freshly squeezed paint, but since I'm frugal and there's some white gouache left on my palette, I'm just going to reactivate it with water and use this to paint the highlights on those bubbles to make them pop out. This is one of those impressive little details that's actually very easy to paint, so just have fun with it. I'm using the same size brush, but you can also use a smaller brush if that makes it easier. And while I have the white gouache with me, I'm also going to add light reflections on the cup, the spoon, as well as the rim of the saucer at the bottom. At this point, you can always go back in to add additional adjustments like shadows and to enhance some of the forms if you would like to depending on where your painting is at. After this, I think I'm going to call this done and do the finishing touches like adding splatters using the dark green color by using a very heavy load on my brush and just tapping it against another brush or any stick to create those splatters. Then at the very end, I also decided to further enhance the cast shadow on the background surface. So I just used a bit of sepia with graphite gray to add a slight glaze. So that's basically it for this painting. It's actually very easy to paint, but it just takes a bit of patience to build on the colors and the textures. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you would like to pair this painting, if you're interested in food illustration, don't forget to check out my new Skillshare class on the Uzi Chocolate Donuts. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!